So I want to encourage our viewers tonight uh, to feel free to text my cell phone. The office number is 902-305-7833. Uh, in a few moments, we'll have uh, our local MP, Mike Calloway, on. And uh, I'm honored to have on uh, someone who has been uh, keeping us in the loop. This is a really tough uh night for myself personally and likely as well as Mike uh, when he comes on. So if you have relevant and reasonable questions, um, please feel free to post them in the comments. It's not necessarily that we'll have time to address them all, but uh, Mike is really good at taking concerns and uh, he gets a copy of the show every time we do one. So please feel free to do so. And if you're not fond of um, putting your, can you guys hear me? I'm just gonna do a sound check here. If you're not fond of putting your name down, please text my cell phone. I'm just going to check here. Okay, let's do a sound check. We'll get this set up, you guys, and do a sound check. Hmm. Check. Sound check. Can you guys give me thumbs up if you can hear that out there, viewers? Paul Fraser, Joanne Rigby Anderson, just getting the sound check ready. Can you give me thumbs up if you can hear? Comment maybe. Thanks, Joanne. Darlene DeVoe. Okay, excellent. I think it was my microphone. I had it kind of wobbly on the side there. So the day is a little bit off. I won't deny that. Oh, and thank goodness. I see Mike now on the bottom here. So I am happy. I am happy. All right, I'm going to bring him up. You can hear now, Joanne? Excellent. Crystal Dumpy. Okay, so let me just do a few house uh, little, I don't know what you want to call them, house rules, I guess. If you have reasonable and relevant comments, please feel free to put them in the uh, comments on the side. Uh, I'm not saying that Mike will be able to address them all, of course, but he does get a copy of the shows and he does see the comments. Um, his assistant takes those. So you guys don't be hesitant uh, to put that in there. And if you're not fond of your name being attached to your comment or your concern, please feel free to text me at 902-305-7833. And uh, I'm going to bring up Mike Calloway. Thank you guys for watching. Let's do a sound check. Mike, can you hear oh, me okay? I can hear you perfectly. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can. Nice, loud, and clear. Wonderful. Sorry for the hair. That's <laughs> how it goes. <laughs> Likewise, but I don't even know where to start because yeah. um, I know this is really tough. We talked about it earlier, you know, and mm. for, for the sense of consistency and also having you on as a local MP to bring us up to date, I think it's really important because it, it really adds to just reassurance that we're getting some accurate details and so forth, Mike. So thank you for doing this. Thank you for coming on. Um, I'm seeing comments already on the side as to uh, what's happened. So you, why don't you start this off with whatever you have to say? Yeah, Rebecca, just to echo your your comments uh, from earlier. It's a uh, when we all woke up on Sunday morning um, and learned of uh, the emerging story, uh, we were horrified, and uh, we continue to be uh, equally horrified and saddened uh, by the loss of so many Nova Scotians. Um, and I believe the number now is 18, uh, not including uh, the perpetrator. So we're up to 18 plus the perpetrate, perpetrator, rather. What, what, uh, what I know is pretty much what you folks know. Uh, we did have a briefing uh, uh, today, uh, just Nova Scotia caucus with uh, the Minister of Public Safety, Bill Blair, and that the investigation is ongoing. Um, and I believe in CBC, 
is quoted that um, they're still making sure that uh, everyone in that area is safe and also checking to see if there's anyone sadly uh, dead or injured uh, in and around that area. So uh, the investigation continues, it's ongoing. Um, and, and, and other than that, I, I, I don't have any information uh, other than to say that, um, um, my God, I mean, we, we were here last week talking about essential workers and talking about um, frontline workers and talking about first responders. And um, you talk about uh, the, the RCMP in this case and average citizens and uh, just uh, what, what, a, what, a, what, a, what a series of days and what a series of days to come to now put ourselves into the category of what happened in Quebec almost 30 years ago with the, the shootings at uh, the Polytechnic. Um, and, um, and my heart goes out to everyone. I know um, it's it's rocked the community, um, it's rocked the uh, province, it's rocked the country. Um, I can tell you that there are MPs that are reaching out to me um, on all sides of, of the political spectrum, just checking in as a Nova Scotia MP to see how you're doing, are you okay? And, I've reached out to Lenore Zahn, who's the MP in, in Cumberland, uh, Colchester as well. And uh, if, as you can imagine, she is um, triaging as much as she can in terms of information to her constituents. So it is a sad, sad day. And that's an understatement of the uh, of the year. And it will be a series, uh, probably a longstanding series of days that uh, uh, to come. But um, my understanding is that obviously the investigation is ongoing. Um, and again, um, let's hope that uh, there are no more injured or, or deceased, uh, but the RCMP are on the case and uh, God bless them and God bless the, uh, the people that have lost their lives, their families. Um, you know, I, I believe that they come from all walks of life. You know, you've got seniors, you've got people that are uh, police officers. My understanding is uh, people in the nursing profession and the teaching profession and the corrections profession and it rocks us hard it rock it, you know i mar i married into a police family uh, so my uh, my brother-in-law is uh, full disclosure he's the chief of police acting chief of police in the cbrn his dad was uh, chief of police of sydney we have a nephew who is in the rcp in windsor and so these type of situations it rocks us all hard, and and, and um, especially, well, not especially. I mean, any but a loss, a loss of life is a loss of life, and it hits everyone deeply, and it's hit Nova Scotians deeply. And sadly, um, you know, there's not much more to say on it than other than I'm. We're all deeply saddened. We're, we we you know we share our, our our love for those that have been impacted, uh, that will continue to be impacted. Mothers, fathers, grandfathers. Uh, grandmothers, friends, colleagues, it impacts everybody. And, uh, um, you know, it's, we say, you know, situations, um, you know, we'll get through it and we will, but my, my God, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a terrible, 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 uh, and heavy load for those families, for those, those friends, those neighbors, the people that lost their lives. It's, it's a, it's a sad day for Canada. It's a sad day for humanity to see this happen and happen so quickly. Uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's got awful. So um, I appreciate the people that have reached out to, to, to my office and uh, to, to wanting to share, you know, best wishes to the people in that, in that part of Nova Scotia and uh, we're Nova Scotians. We stick together, but it's also interesting too. We're, we're in a point, you know, this is, I believe week five of um, being uh, self-isolated and, you know, my concern, um, is for everyone at this time to be able to demonstrate uh, compassion and empathy and grief. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there will be some type of uh, Facebook um, uh, event uh, that the uh, County of Cumberland Colchester is putting on. And uh, check your Facebook accounts to find out more about that. But I think that's one way to show, you know, to show your, uh, to show you how sorry you feel at this time. It's a surreal time uh, prior to this, and now it's surreal, but all too real. And, and there's a lot of soul searching that I think we'll all go through at this time. I agree, Mike, where it's, uh, it's almost like we're forcibly in such a, it, the great pause. We, our lives, every single one of us can resonate with how, what each other is going through. And 
as ironic as it is, the difficulties that we're facing, I, I don't ever recall any time ever in my lifespan feeling uh, oddly enough as connected to what I know my neighbor and someone across the other side of the world is feeling and thinking. So um, I, I, I agree with you there for sure. Uh, and noticing the comments, and I just want to acknowledge them on the side, Margie Snow, Fran Hannington, good friend of mine from out west, Alberta's watching, Peggy White, all of Canada's morning with Nova Scotia, watching from Glace Bay, Margie, uh, Paul McDonald, Florence Sutherland, uh, Sheila Briand, Joanne Rigby, uh, Paul McDonald. Good, Paul. I'm glad you can do sound checks with me, Paul. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, so viewers, um, yeah, we, we wanted to bring Mike on tonight, and he comes on Monday nights, I, the last couple Monday nights, actually, uh, just to give us updates. Do you have anything locally, Mike, uh, on Cape Breton Island, Kanzo, that you can uh, shed any light on here? I know we've had some really interesting um, uh, grants and, and support come through for from the government lately, and that which, had, which has been encouraging for small businesses. Anything like that? Do you have any updates on what uh, what's been come out the last couple of days? Yeah, I'll, I'll highlight um, maybe three or four of them. Um, the first three are, are, are connected to the uh, Canada Emergency Response Benefit. So we've expanded the eligibility of that particular benefit uh, to allow all workers, including those self-employed, to earn up to $1,000 a month while collecting the benefit. Okay. And that's a, that's a big deal. Uh, and also including workers who have recently exhausted their EI uh, regular benefits since January 1st, 2020 and are unable to find or return to work because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And also that includes seasonal workers who've exhausted their uh, EI regular benefits since January 1st and are un un unable to take on the usual seasonal work that they would normally uh, could and would. Um, so those are three in relation to serve. And what I say, um, uh, I think every Monday night is that, uh, you know, we, we put these uh, benefit packages together uh, to help Canadians. And we also know that there's a good chance that they will um, morph and evolve based on your comments of your of your viewers uh, mm -hmm. and other people that have reached out to me and other MPs to talk about well can the Serb do this and can the Serb do that and mm, a lot of a lot of great people from all walks of life in my riding have played an instrumental role in uh, uh, helping me write my briefing notes to uh, make recommendations to the existing uh, benefits. Uh, these are but three of them. Uh, in particular, though, with respect to uh, um, the, um, there is a forty thousand uh, dollar interest-free loan over two years, uh, but there was a threshold to obtain that forty thousand uh, dollar interest-free loan, and it was originally you had to have a payroll if you were a small business of fifty thousand, between fifty thousand and a million. Well, we've lessened that threshold to twenty thousand, and okay. and upped it on the other end to one point five. And so that's going to help a lot more businesses to be able to obtain that interest-free loan for a period of a couple of years. Uh, yeah. It broadens the net uh, a, fair, a fair amount. Now, I'm always honest with the viewers, and I would say that I think, uh, again, with um, and that's this is an amazing effort, an amazing measure. But I also think that we need now to look at that particular measure and see how do we improve that, like we're yeah. doing with the CERB. So mm -hmm. I, I encourage um, your viewers to, to reach out to you, to reach out to me. Um, we read every email, every uh, piece of insight, every challenge, every, every, every problem and every opportunity. We truly do. Uh, mm -hmm. it, takes us, it takes us a while because we probably get around 300 emails a day and I have a staff of five and myself. So uh, we triage them every day and do our best to get back uh, to, to, to those folks. But, Keep them coming if you have a concern or a comment um, in and around CERB, uh, in and around um, yep. the, uh, the the subsidy itself uh, would be yep. um, uh, another one, and also the interest-free loan. Okay. Now, I know uh, we brought this up last time on, uh, we were talking last week, and it's daily updates. Uh, do you have anything for the fisher, the fisheries industry, Mike? The, well, more specifically, the lobster industry. I know we have a lot of fishermen watching tonight. Ton, a ton of uh, fishers. Uh, I've counted now, um, and I want to thank every fisher in the riding, and I mean this sincerely. Uh, the education that I've received over the past four weeks from uh, fishers from Guysboro to the west side of the island to Harvey Boucher to the east side of the island. I've been on 
35 calls in three weeks with uh, different associations. So uh, thanks for that. Um, in terms of um, the updates, um, I'm been talking to Minister uh, Jordan in terms of if there will be some announcements soon. And I'm hesitant to put a timeline on it because every time I say it's around the corner, it seems like it's not around the corner. Mm -hmm. uh, but, I, but I can say this is that I've been echoing two streams mm -hmm. from what I'm hearing. Uh, one stream is, you know, a lot of fishers and a lot of people within the fishing industry that uh, um, for health reasons and for economic reasons, or first, first and foremost for health reasons, yeah. uh, would prefer not to fish. And I can yeah. appreciate and understand why. So I've sent my briefing note as to the recommendations that I think could help those folks. Again, these are not government recommendations. They're Mike Kellaway recommendations that um, yeah. are, are gone to the ministers in question. Uh, and then you have uh, a category of folks uh, that uh, want to fish. And it's not an East West Island thing. If there's those that on both sides um, yeah. that, that uh, fall into that equation and on the mainland as well. Uh, that want to fish, but want mm -hmm. to ensure that there's strict uh, provincial health measures in place and also some type of system yep. around the catch. So um, so I put those both recommendations for a lot of with a lot of sub recommendations, but they're not Mike Kellaway uh, recommendations. They're my uh, the, the folks in the fishery that have given it to me. So to answer your question, I do not have an update uh, tonight. Uh, yeah. As many of you folks know uh, out there in the, uh, that, that are fishers or work in plants, um, uh, I'm taking your calls, calling you back, the, the, if not the same day, the same night or the day after. Um, so I've been advocating my heart out for you. Um, other than uh, the only comment I would make at this point, Rebecca, beyond that is that I feel for everybody in the fishery right now in terms of that sense of anxiety, uh, yeah. that sense of, uh, you know, uh, running to stand still kind of feeling. Um, and um, I've been echoing that in very real terms to government, uh, mm -hmm. and, re and, and uh, I'm, I'm hoping, uh, beyond hope, I know you, that's probably not the right word you're going to say, Kellaway, you're hoping, deliver, um, and, but I, I, I believe that that is really forthcoming in terms of some measures that can be put in place, uh, and I hope they're the measures that we've put forward as a riding, as a, as a community of communities in the fishing world. Mm -hmm. And what about um, flattening the curve? Do we have any local reports or updates on how we're doing specifically in uh, Cape Breton or in Nova Scotia? As far yeah, as yeah. I mean, um, I, I know I'm reading the same stats as everyone else in terms of the uh, uh, watching Dr. Strang every day, me and my wife. Uh, I, I take a little break from work and we watch. Um, I think the key message here on, on this is, um, is one of... Um, due diligence and resiliency. Um, I, what I hear is that we're on the right path and we need to kind of double down on our efforts. And I think everybody, I think most people now get it. Uh, and yeah. for those that don't, um, I'm sorry, you're never gonna get it. Uh, yeah. And so um, I wish you would. Um, yeah. But I, I, I'm hoping that all these efforts, and, they, and it seems like even though the numbers are, you know, every day we're seeing, we, I think today was 43 new cases. Yeah. Um, uh, is that I think that, you know, according to Strang and Dr. Tam, this is following the trajectory um, that will allow us to eventually stem the tide. Um, what was really interesting was last week when uh, Prime Minister Trudeau gave um, kind of a series of models of what we're doing and how that will help in the coming months or mm -hmm. if we didn't do anything. And I think they calculated that close to 80%. I had to check it twice. I thought that's that number's off. But if we didn't do anything, up to 80% of Canadians have the probability of getting uh, coronavirus. So um, I guess I guess what I believe and from what I'm reading is that we're making all the right moves. Uh, we need to do more in terms of uh, getting PPE to our frontline workers. Uh, we've seen announcements from the prime minister in ordering a substantial amount of, of PPE. We've seen yeah. our business sector in Canada step up to the plate, quite frankly, when it comes to looking at creating ventilators and our own proto case in Cape Breton is, is, is playing a role in that. And I remember it seems like a lifetime ago, but three and a half weeks ago, maybe four talking to Doug 
about uh, what could he do. And he reached out to me and then we kind of uh, fed off each other's kind of let's do something here. So we got him in contact with Health Canada. Um, the, 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 the businesses are stepping up to the plate. But yeah. I, I guess we, it's an unprecedented event. We all, we've heard that over and over again. Uh, and it's true. Um, and I think what we've seen is unprecedented measures. But now as we you know, get more PPE and get it into the hands of our nurses, our doctors, our orderlies, uh, that's my concern. I want to make sure that every healthcare uh, personnel in Nova Scotia, in my riding, has what they need when they need it. And I, I trust that the Minister of Health, Patty Haidu, is meeting uh, consistently every week with the ministers of health provincially to get to ascertain what their what are their needs in their health authorities in their regions. So we need to keep on that. We need it's like, like it's, it's a basketball term. I was barely a basketball player, so I don't know why I'm using this term. But it's a full core press consistently every day on recommendations, practices, but also government's, government's efforts. Um, the reason why you see every day announcements being made is that this virus uh, connects to every facet of our lives. When you think about every facet of your life, we're trying to come up with some type of measure to assist, to help, to keep people whole. Because we understand that, mm -hmm. this, that this virus has a face. It's you. It's me. It's your neighbor down the street. It's the business owner. It's the the uh, the person that is uh, in, in a long term healthcare facility, and uh, and so we get it. We understand it. The empathy is there because we live here. We're part of this community. We see the impact it's having. So we'll keep with these measures. There'll be more measures to be announced. Um, um, I would believe that um, uh, you know every day you're going to see either an enhancement to an existing a measure or a new measure that focuses on a specific sector, uh, whether it's, you know, we talk about tourism, for example, uh, you know, there, there needs to be measures in place for those seasonal workers. We have a fair amount now, but we need to kind of drill down and delineate more what the, what the needs are. People like okay. Terry Smith with Cape Breton, Destination Cape Breton have been working very closely with and sent off his recommendations for, that were based on tourism operators in Cape Breton, North, well, Cape Breton. And I've been dealing with, uh, in Guysboro, uh, uh, I meet every week uh, with uh, the Guysboro Chamber of Commerce and, and the town of Mulgrave and Port Hawkesbury and Richmond County and Inverness County and the CBRM, and the First Nations uh, chiefs in particular. You, you do this not to put, the, put, up, put out appearances. You do this because the only way we're going to come out of this and come out of this from a health perspective, but also from an economic development perspective, is that if we start breaking down the silos that were here before COVID, mm -hmm. we're all one region. We all got to pull together, whether it's COVID or not COVID. Um, and I think what COVID has shown us and what has shown what government can do is that the art of the possible is possible when there's political will. And honestly, what the people of this riding in particular, but people from all over uh, Nova Scotia has, have illustrated is through their work with the MPs, and, and the MPs working with cabinet, good things can happen. I'm, I use the analogy or the example or not analogy that, you know, some of the measures that came out initially were changed because of what the MPs were hearing from the community and the MPs bringing that message to cabinet. That's pretty awesome. Um, and I think it, in an era where we, we, it's easy to be cynical, and I get why, I do. Um, when you see what people can do, uh, when the political will is there, uh, not not just when the fight is there, but when the ability to compromise is there. Uh, it's You need to be a fighter, but you also need to be able to compromise. You, you also have to know how to nuance mm -hmm. things. And so many people in our riding have done that. I mean, I can't tell you the amount of recommendations that went into my briefing note. Um, I mean, I was the mm -hmm. author of it, but, um, you know, in terms of putting my name on it, but everybody was a collective author on, 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 on what's being presented to Ottawa. So to our viewers out there too, I noticed a really neat uh, post today that was encouraging and it was a reach out, uh, I think it was Jaime Batiste put it up and he said, if you're feeling, if you have moments, you know, like we we all are handling this so different. I mean, there's so many, we're adapting at moment's notice to things we weren't prepared for. Mm -hmm. So to be thrown off, I call it as a mom, I call it thrown off my rocker. 
um, to be thrown off or shaken from the knees down is quite yeah. normal. And what I really appreciate is there's a really solid resource uh, that I, you had mentioned that last time you were on, Mike, with the mental wellness uh, yes. portal. Can yes. you elaborate on that? I was on there today again, um, just in fact, sharing some tools with my daughter about anxiety and it was really user friendly. Yeah, I mean, the app itself, the mental health app, um, and we'll have to get the link to, to, to you if you have it. Yeah. To, to share with your viewers, it's a you know an ability to um, um, I guess tips are the wrong word, but the abilities to identify, to cope, to 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 search services that are out there. Um, it, it's really kind of a one stop shop for that initial kind of uh, mental health debrief. Yeah, and and I think um, you know it's a much larger discussion now as we go further into COVID is. You know, my concern, and it's actually something that I, I think would be great for for us to see if we can bring someone on, um, maybe a, a couple of people to speak to uh, services that are out there uh, for people um, that uh, need someone to talk to, need someone to just, you know, you know, clear their head with, um, and uh, might be a good opportunity uh, utilizing your platform, Rebecca, because I think. Uh, a lot of people out there um, are feeling, you know, at times the walls closing in on, on, on them. Uh, it may not necessarily be depression, but it may be a, a mild anxiety or whatever the case may be. Uh, it's all mental health related. So we have to, you know, we uh, I'm not an expert on it, but I know that we should be able to bring some people together to be able to speak to the, what's out there for individuals, beyond, including the, uh, the, uh, the act that the, the federal government has put together. Um, but this is something that actually keeps me up at night. Look, a lot of things keep me up at night. Look at me. A lot of things are keeping me up at night. Um, you know, one is, I mean, obviously around the fishers and seasonal workers, uh, and we're batting yeah. and taking our swings for you on that. The other one is around mental health. Um, and, uh, you know, for everyone from seniors that are in long-term healthcare facilities that cannot uh, be connected to their family, to uh, many of us, if not all of us, really, that are, in our homes for week number five and how that you know plays a role if you don't have a routine you had a routine you don't have a routine to maybe some pre-existing health conditions that people had that now are exacerbated uh by COVID 19. Yeah. so um patty haidu has said this as well the minister of health is that this is of grave concern for her uh, and it is one for me as well i've started my career in the mental health profession and uh, uh, have a uh, just have an affinity for 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 mental health and the services that are available, the people behind it, and the people that uh, not suffer from it but uh, um, uh, cope with it and manage it. Uh, and um, and uh, it, it's a, it's a tough one, Rebecca. Um, so you know, I think that um, to get some skilled practitioners of the trade, I'd love to be a part of that discussion as well. To talk talk to the public out there because this is the, these things the, the, these platforms, Ripple FX. I think is a tremendous platform for 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 everyone in in Cape Breton and Nova Scotia, for that matter, northeastern Nova Scotia. My riding, where people can get up to date, but also be connected. And little things yeah. can help, like this. Um, so you know, when I hear of, uh, I just you know, for example, you were rhyming off those names, and I went, I know him, I know her, and I get a little yeah. little smile on my head, hey, right? Um, yeah. And and so we've this is kind of this these rare moments in time where and I've said it before is, you know, be extra empathetic, be extra caring, reach out to someone you haven't talked to in a while, give them a ring, yeah. give them a call. Um, I have some staff or former staff that have went on to do other things in Ottawa. And I know they're stuck in Ottawa. I give them a call just to check in and say, Hey, how are you doing? Are you going for a walk? Are you, are you going for a run um, with my own staff? You know, we, yeah. you know, we've sat down and said like, how's everyone doing? How, like it's 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 pretty stressful. How are we doing? What things can we can I do as your employer to help you um, get through this? And so um, a, a lot of it is um, certainly beyond my pay grade in terms of the mental health science. But I do believe um, you know we need to focus and double down on it now uh, because I think there's the COVID and then there's the post COVID. Um, and, uh, and so so I have a special interest in that. Um, and it does, and it does bother me, and it does, it does, it does keep me up at night. And I usually then get up and 
watch TV and write some notes and go back to bed. And then my wife said, you're up. This is the fourth time you're up. I went, I know. I know. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so mental health, um, the portal that we have, Rebecca, I, I, I encourage people to check it out. I think it's a, a good tool to, to be able to access and to use. Um, and then maybe one of the things we will do um, is we sit down offline with you, Rebecca, to talk about like what could be done on your show to bring some folks on. Uh, I could think of a couple of names, I won't say them on air, that are amazing people in the field of mental health. Uh, and yeah. uh, I, I think would be worth hearing from. It would be. It would add uh, extra reassurance that uh, we're, we're in the right direction and we're putting out resources that um, are connecting people. We have Bob Martell on tomorrow night from Il Madame, a doctor of 35 years and who was very heavily involved with palliative care. And he's on yes. tomorrow night. So it's going to be nice to talk to Bob. And he's can't come back from retirement as a, as a physician. So it's going to be good to talk with him and I'll be watching that actually. I, I, I encourage yeah. everyone to watch that. I, I, I've seen uh, Dr. Martell um, in, in other venues and uh, uh, we're, worth listening to and, uh, and hearing from. So viewers, if you get the gist of what uh, you know, the platform is that, that has grown dramatically in the last year um, uh, before Wayne Crisada passed away, K, K. Breton Live TV, the founder, uh, he asked that Ripple Effects and K. Breton Live merge together. And uh, anyway, despite my hesitation and apprehension, here we are. Never expected that uh, anything like this would happen six months later, but um, we are very grateful that you're staying connected with us. And it's uncut. It's, I mean, it's un, there's nothing, it's, it's bringing things to the table and it's getting engaged with each other and comments and feedback and concerns. So we really appreciate you watching and putting in your comments on the side. Um, even if you don't live in Nova Scotia, we love hearing from you. So mm -hmm. Mike, do you have any closing words to say tonight before we end this uh, difficult broadcast? This, this was one of the toughest ones. I'm, I'm going to admit. Yeah, I am. Um, I, I hear you. Um, no, like you said, it's a tough day. Um, mm -hmm. There are going to be more tough days to come. Um, it seems like there's a body blow after body blow and today or yesterday was a, a, a immense body blow. Uh, you know, Anna, Anna, Annette Marie Saunders said it best, your, your heart breaks. Uh, and uh, our collective hearts are breaking. Um, and there'll be, there's going to be time to mourn and, and mourn in a considerable manner because this is a pretty devastating blow. Um, but, but we'll get through it. Um, COVID, this immense tragedy we're going to get through it we're going to get it through it together because this this kind of stuff mm -hmm. this this platform letting you know you're not alone letting you know that you know covid is getting on your last nerve uh letting you you know that you want to get outside that or you want to see your loved one or you want to get back to work um and then on the other side of it with the tragedy in cumberland um it is immensely sad but um, we um, are going to be there when they mourn, and we're going to be there to help each other get through it. And what Nova Scotians do, uh, and it's not, a, it's not hyperbole, what, what Nova Scotians do best is come together to help each other in times of crises. And we've got the one and two punch this week of crisis situations. But um, we'll get through it because we're strong, uh, because we care, we give a damn. We love our neighbors and love will always outweigh hate. We want to say hello to our Unamagi family as well, our Mi'kmaq uh, families out there, Eskazoni. Um, we love you. We hear uh, you're, you're uh, going by everything that the chief has there. And uh, we just want to send out hello to all of our five reserves on Cape Breton Island and our Mi'kmaq family. So. Well, without further ado, I want to wish everyone a lovely evening, a restful evening. And uh, thank you very much, Mike, for coming on tonight. I really appreciate it. And we appreciate the work that you're doing behind the scenes as well. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, same to you and everyone. Uh, be well and, and be safe. This broadcast is officially over. This is Rebecca and Mike with Ripple Effects Canada. Thanks, you guys. Have a good evening. Bye.